Hello Millies, welcome back to Doll Mill. I'm sure some of you might have already guessed the theme of this video, basing yourselves on the pic I posted on Instagram yesterday. Yes, indeed, it's a space theme. But which one in particular? It's the solar system. I was invited to join this amazing collab and given the chance to choose a planet on which to base my concept on. Most of them were taken by the time I joined, but I was surprised to see Earth was still up for grabs, so I absolutely had to make it mine. I mean, come on guys, it's our home planet, full of life of many different kinds and arguably the most beautiful one in our system, in my humble opinion. We put it through the grinder so much, I think it deserves a little homage, don't you think? So I came up with this design for my custom. As you can see, this was made to resemble Mother Earth and showing the duality of her planet's environment, one side representing the natural side and the other the artificial man-made side. And I've got the perfect volunteer for this project. She's an old made-to-move Barbie I customized a couple of years ago and she just stayed in a corner all this time. I think she will look great as the embodiment of planet Earth. We prep her as we always do before we can begin. Now I mark the parts where I will cut using my Dremel tool. I kind of feel like Dr. Frankenstein here. Using a round sanding tip, I drill to make enough space for our little earth. Now I gotta drill a tiny hole through this removable part and put a thin wire through it. And do the same to the lower arm. Now I twist the wire to secure it in place and cut the excess with some wire cutters. It can now join the shoulder part easily. Once again, we bring out our reliable epoxy sculpt and start giving shape to the torso armor. Remember to use water to smooth everything out and merge new added parts on top. I use sculpting tools to help do what my fingers can't, and use a needle to create the dents and patterns on top for detailing. Then we basically continue adding more epoxy sculpt and shaping it based on the design. On the right wrist, I drill another hole and pass the wire through to create the rocky fingers. The arm is also covered to make a big rock. And I use a flat sculpting tool to simulate the rough and uneven surface. Now, I notice how the twisty upper part of the arm might be easily pulled out with little force. So I cut the tip of a needle the type with the little ball on the other side, I don't know what it's called, <laughs> and super glue it through the hole I previously did with my Dremel, so the twisty part can stay twisty. We cover the other arm and smooth the surface with water. For the right leg, I had to add different pieces of epoxy and sculpt individually to resemble rocks, just like the arm on that side. We basically do what I did with the arms to join the upper part of the leg and the knee using wires. And for the lower leg, just use more wires and twist them until they are the same length of the other leg. We sculpt a few more rocks here and there, do the other details on the mechanical side, and we put the sculpting to the side for a sec. I want the short she's wearing on the left side to be real fabric, so I cut the legging she was wearing originally, put them through her left leg and glue it with Fabri-Tac glue. Now I can sculpt the lower part of the armor set. Let me tell you, it was hard because epoxy doesn't grab onto fabric at all, but thanks to the other side being firmly in place, I managed. We are officially done with the sculpting part of the body. Let's go for the head. I put some thin wires through the top of her head, twist a knot at the ends to secure it. And then twist and shape to resemble the branches coming off the top. 
Now I can use the epoxy to start sculpting the mechanical side. It's at this point that I realized I should have put the head on before or I would risk the epoxy breaking if I let it dry. But of course it was a struggle and this happened. <laughs> oh well, just had to reshape everything again. I detailed using the sculpting tools and the needle as I did with the body. And now I covered the wires, shaped them and detailed them the same way. Remember, water is key for smoothing the transitions. After adding the last few details to the head, we let everything dry and finally start on the paint following the colors on the design. Dark earthy green for the rocks, ochre for the woody part, silver for the metals. I'm gonna use a permanent marker on some areas just to make sure there's no scraping of paint, especially on the jointed areas on the left side. Now we basically continue painting away all areas following the colors on the drawing. For the sculpted areas on the head too. Dry brushing some lighter paint on top of the rocks gives it more texture and a nice effect. Before I jump to the face up, I gotta take care of a couple of details. First, the moss. I ripped a tissue into a bunch of tiny pieces for this part. We mix a bit of white glue with a bit of water to get very watery glue. Set the pieces of tissue on top of the areas where it's going to be attached and use a brush to drop the watery glue on top. Shaping it and also layering up until you're happy with the way it looks. When dry, we can paint it. First a darker green, and then a lighter one for effect. I need to create a couple of armor plates, so I use the magic foam method. Draw and cut the shapes with magic foam and carefully warm them using a candle's flame to shape them. Now we paint them correspondingly and once dry, we can super glue them to the right areas. We can finally begin the face up. It's gonna be super simple because all the details are in the sculpted areas. We draw some basic lines to mark where the eyes will be. Use a dark color to draw that mouth line. I'm going to ignore the teeth part the sculpt comes with. I want it to resemble my design with a close-mouthed smile. Now I layer up a lot of brown so that the transition from the branched area looks even smoother. And give some soft shadow to the lips too. Before sealing and going to the next layer, I use my white pencil to draw the electric patterns on her head, thorax and leg. After sealing, I draw the eyebrow, and then paint it with acrylic paint. The lips will also pop up more with acrylics rather than layering up pastels. As a last minute decision, I thought, wouldn't shine the dark paints look cool here? So I bought them. Now I use them to paint the eyes. I use a toothpick to dot brown spots and white spots on the face and body. And use white again to paint over the electric patterns. Painting is complete! Now we're just missing a few details. I grab some paper covered wire I had lying around. I measure it, cut it and paint it before gluing it around the right arm and leg to resemble vines. The hair was prepared previously into webs. So now we can go ahead and glue them to her right side. 
Her head is already small and there's no need to glue anything on the left side, so I made way more hair than I actually needed. We cut some tiny leaves from green paper until we have a whole bunch of them. And using fast dry glue we set them on top of the branches and all around the vines. Oh, I almost forgot, she's got some beads on her hair design. So I'm gonna make two rows of the matching colors using simple thread and I will glue them later to the head. I also use slightly bigger beads to separate a couple of strands of hair. I glue them in place with fabric tack later. I ordered some nail art tiny flowers from AliExpress and also set those on her hair using fabric tack. And finally, as a last detail, I used some direct clear matte varnish without watering it down to set on top of all the metallic parts to give them some shiny reflective effect like the real metal has. This was the last part of the whole process. With this done, Earth is finally complete. I can say for sure, this has been the most elaborate custom I've ever made. So much sculpting. I think I finished half my container of epoxy sculpt. But I can tell you, this has also been one of the most fun projects I've done too. I love the duality of the design the beauty of our perfect natural environment clashing with the scientific progress of our people. And of course, I had to give the new paint a whirl. Holy fudge, I was giggling like a little girl when I saw it for the first time. I love how bright she shines, looks all mystical and otherworldly. Gonna have to use these paints into future designs now. So, there you have it, my representation of planet Earth. If you wish to see all the other planets in the solar system, you can go check them out. We have Kira's workshop with Neptune, Valkyrie's world with Venus, the Dolly Geek with Mars, Selene with Saturn, Enchanterium with Jupiter, OOAK Nara with Pluto, Blank Space Doll with Mercury, his name is Sakin with Uranus, and of course yours truly with Earth. As you can see, the idea was to make an alien for each different planet, but I mean, I didn't want to make a human. Too basic. <laughs> So I went for a Mother Earth-like character, a being that represents and embodies what planet Earth is. You can check all of their videos by following the links I'll leave in the description below. I also want to give a quick shout out to all my wonderful patrons. 
I couldn't do it without you guys. Thanks for all the time you have been with me and all the support you've always given me. I love you all. Earth can be adopted by following the link up here. She'll be available in an auction in eBay and she will go to the top bidder. The bid will run for one full week. Good luck to everyone! Earth also kindly requests for people to be more careful with their home. She is tired of cleaning up your messes. Thank you very much. Really hope you all enjoyed watching. I will see you in the next one. Tschüss!